Hello and welcome to the channel Windows vs Linux. This video is going to be the first in a three-part mini-series that is going to basically introduce you to how, how you can start using Windows programs within Linux or alongside Linux. Um, if you follow the videos up to this point, you will have installed Linux on a machine or at least used the live environment. And you will have started to look at some alternative programs um, for your Windows software that you typically use. Um, and the program we're going to be looking at today is a Linux program called Wine. Now what Wine is, is a compatibility layer between Windows and Linux essentially. What it does is, it takes the commands that would be used to run a Windows piece of software and translates it to where Linux can understand it and run it. I will say that Wine is pretty hit and miss. There are a lot of programs that will not work using it, but they're are programs that will work using it, so it's, it's kind of a crapshoot on getting this to run. But like I said, this, this would be the starting point in trying to get Windows software to work within Linux. So we're going to jump over to the Linux side of things and I'll show you how to install Wine and how to use it. Okay, so here we are within Linux Mint. Now the first thing you want to do in order to install the Wine program is you want to go to your software center. So if we go down to the menu and you can either click this button here, which is Software Manager, or you can just type in Software, and it'll be the first one, Software Manager. And like I said in the previous video, this is how you would install programs on Linux. So what we want to do is go to the search and just type in Wine. And there's actually a couple things we want to install when this comes up. You want to scroll all the way to the bottom and you want to look for this right here, Wine HQ dash stable. There are different versions of Wine. Um, this would be the development version right here, which means that uh, this is geared for developers that just want to test whether or not something will work using it. Uh, you have a staging version as well here, but the, the one we're interested in is stable. So we'll click on that and click install. Okay, and that will go through and get all the things that we need. You can see this will pop up. You will need each of these, so just hit continue. And if it asks for your password, just go ahead and put it in. Okay, now while that is installing, we want to go back. And the other program that we want is at the very top, this Play on Linux. Now Play on Linux is basically a front end for Wine. It allows you to install certain pieces of software that usually will either require certain customizations or it just basically makes things easier for certain programs. It, it takes all the, uh, the back-end stuff and does it for you essentially so you don't have to do it yourself. So we will want to install that as well. Okay, okay so we do have Wine Stable and that should have installed some extra things as well. Yep, it installed these as well, which we'll need. And that is installed as well. All right, so we'll close this down. So the program I want to demonstrate that you can do is actually a Windows program that I used to frequently use, and that is Windows Movie Maker. And I used to use this program all the time on Windows to create um, basic video editing. So if we type Windows Media Player, uh, the, the version I tested is, well, it, it would actually help if I type the right thing. We want Movie Maker, not Media Player. Okay, and this is the one that we're interested in. This is the one I tested. So you have two versions on this site. You have a classic and the newest version. We're going to install the newest version. And whenever you see this, when it says open with, um, normally this would say something else if you didn't have Wine installed, but now that we do have Wine installed, it's going to open it with the Wine program loader. So we'll hit OK to that. It will go through and download that. So I'll just speed this up so you don't have to sit through it. Okay, now that that is installed, it should pop up with the Wine installer. So we'll just go ahead and minimize this and just wait for it to do its thing. And there we go. 
So this is typically what you would see on the Windows side of things if you were to install Movie Maker. Now Movie Maker is no longer supported by Windows. Um, I think they've moved on to another program, um, but this is what you would normally see if you wanted to install it on Windows. So we'll go ahead and walk through this. All right. It's going to go through and extract all the files it needs and then install it. So again, I'll just speed this up so you don't have to sit through it. Okay, and Movie Maker has been installed. You'll see we have an icon on our desktop right here. Now, quickly I want to mention, if you happened to watch that installer as it was installing, you would have seen that it showed that it was installing to a C drive um, like it would in Windows. Now, Linux doesn't actually use a C drive. It doesn't even have a C drive um, because the file structure is different. If we go to Files, I'll show you how it's different here. All right, so Normally, this is what you would see if you open files. This is your home directory where all of your uh, like documents, music, downloads, that, those things are. If we actually go to the, the first part, this is your root folder. This contains pretty much everything within Linux itself. And this would be your home folder. So if we go to that, this would be all your users. This is where all your users would be listed. And again, this is where all your files would be. So. As you can see, there's no actual C drive within Linux. What Wine does, if I go back to our main directory, and if I right click and hit Show Hidden Files, this is all the program data within that you've downloaded essentially. And you'll see right here that we have a .wine folder. If I go into that, um, what Wine does is it basically creates a virtual C drive and within that drive you have program files and program files 86 that you would normally see within Windows just like you'll have a users right here okay so what Wine does is it basically creates a virtual file system that you would normally see within Windows because any Windows program that you download will expect to see these um, folders set up here okay so it's, it's basically installing the software and then pointing to this virtual C drive. Okay, so that's how Wine actually works. It's basically, Wine actually, it actually stands for Wine is not an emulator, but I don't know how else to explain it. Wine basically emulates Windows and its file structure so that the programs that you download can work, okay? So as you can see, it did install, so we'll go ahead and launch Windows Movie Maker. Okay, and this will take a little bit of time to set up, so again, I'll just quickly fast forward the video. Alright, and as you can see, uh, we don't want this, so I'll hit Don't Show Again. This is the newest version of Windows Movie Maker. So normally you would never be able to even load this program within Linux because it is a Windows program. But since we have Wine installed, we now have Windows Movie Maker. So that is how you would install um, a Windows program using the Wine program itself. Um, I will quickly show you the Play on Linux program. Uh, so right here, Play on Linux. Now, like I said, again, this program, what it does is it's just a, um, a face for Wine. It basically takes care of a lot of the configuration that you would normally use with Wine to get certain programs to run. You have different options here. Um, you can configure a program, remove a program, install. Uh, you can run a program that's listed within here, but we're going to try to install. And this normally, the first time that you open this, I've, I've already downloaded this before, but the first time that you would open this, it would go through and update all the uh, available caches within here. And you have different categories. Okay, you have games. This is the majority of the software for this program because it is play on Linux. So normally these programs you would not be able to run natively on Linux. So this would help uh, with that. You have graphic programs and any of these that you can't see, if you just click on, you'll be able to see what they are. You have internet. You have different, uh, if you wanted to run Internet Explorer for whatever reason, you could do that. Multimedia. So again, you, you have different categories. Um, you do have Microsoft Office in here. You have three different versions. 
actually have multiple multiple different versions all the way up to 2016 it looks like I will say that uh, most of the programs within this play on Linux program you will either need a CD for that program or you will have already had to download the uh, downloadable file for that program sometimes if you try to install a program it will go through and ask you if you want to download it so it will download it for you but more often than not you'll either need the CD or the downloadable file already on hand for it so again um, th this is a very good program for just quickly installing certain things like uh, you can see Amazon Kindle, 7-zip a lot of the things that you might use for Windows it just takes care of a lot of the back-end stuff for you so you won't have to do it yourself so I'm not going to install anything with this, I'll leave you to play with that. Um, but that is how you would get Windows programs installed on Linux using Wine. In the next video we'll be taking a look at something called Virtual Machines. So like I said, Wine is kind of a hit and miss, so if you do have a program that you normally use that does not work using it, um, the next video will actually teach you how to do it that it will work 100% of the time usually. Alright, so thank you for watching this video, stay tuned for that video, and I'll see you then. Thank you very much.